Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right, Will? Computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Why, there! My name's Timmy Joe. I make videos about these CPUs on the internet. What's up today? Yeah, lots of videos this week. It's been fun. Uh, so, I wanted to settle up a little thing, uh, cause I'm done with using it, and, uh, Basically, why are we doing an X58? I know I've beat it to death, but these little Zeons are just amazing, and uh, I thought I'd actually use one for a production machine uh, for about a two-week transition period while I was waiting for the Intel system or whatever, the uh, 9600K, or I was hoping for 97 or 9900K to come in. I was like, let's do something different and see how their little Xeons from like eight years ago still hold up. So they're really good actually. And I know we beat this to death and like Tech Yes City's done it a billion times, but heck, what's one more video? Because in the wake of a really expensive, you know, $300 9600K from Intel with six cores, you can get the whole freaking motherboard RAM and CPU for that kind of price with this, you know, if you look hard enough. By uh, you know uh, the motherboard's going to be the most expensive thing, maybe cost you 100 to 150 bucks for an X58 motherboard that's decent enough to overclock. But you know you take one of those, go on AliExpress or eBay, buy an X5650, which is what I got here today, and then uh, you know that for 50 bucks, buy 100 bucks worth of RAM because you can stick 48 gigs worth in these. There's triple channel memory. There's six slots. I got 24 gigs in here, but at one point I had 48 gigs just because I had that lying around and I thought it would be fun. And then you grab one of these things, you overclock it with, I just have a little tower cooler on it, you know, well, it's a big tower cooler, but uh, this big Reven with uh, 140 mil on it gets it to 4.2 gigahertz, no, no issues with cooling. And then you slam an RX 580 in there and you Bob's your uncle. It's this awesome gaming video editing machine. Yes, I video edited on it and, and image edited, did all my stuff, did a little bit of uh, test streaming and stuff like that. It does a really good job because it's a six core, 12 thread, you know, six core with hyper threading machine that does very, very well. Now, little background, I still use CyberLink PowerDirector to edit all my videos. Now that might make a lot of people cringe. It's like the bargain basement of video editing software. But back like three, four years ago when I started YouTube, I literally bought a full license and, you know, all the packs and stuff like the editing packs for it. And uh, I've since, you know, had the money to try to go back to Adobe Premiere. And I, it always takes me like twice as long to edit in Premiere because I'm so used to editing in uh, CyberLink PowerDirector. And I wind up going back to it and it fits my needs. It works really well. On Ryzen, it, you basically run it as fast as it'll go with 1080p graphics. Anyways, it'll, it'll edit 4K and stuff like that too. It's a pretty good editing software, but it ain't, it ain't bad. And uh, I've used it on this, you know, six core Xeon system for uh, a good two, two and a half weeks. Well, I made probably about 10 YouTube videos on it. And it's a little slower than normal. Uh, cer certainly it is if you use certain file formats, like when I export from OBS, which I use all the time, I find that that like, particular file system or encoding, it kind of bogged down uh, this system where it wouldn't on the Ryzen 20, you know, 700X or the uh, Core i5 9600K. Um, I, I did notice there was some slowdown, but it wasn't like unusable. It wasn't something that made me throw the system out. So. So far, so good. So, of course, it's going to be a little bit slower rendering. It actually takes about 7 minutes and 51 seconds to uh, render a, what was it, uh, I don't know, uh, 844 megabyte file. And it took 5 minutes and 43 seconds on the 6 core without hyper-threading Core i5. So, yeah, there's a delta there. There's about 2 minute, you know. You're waiting longer. Uh, with the IPC on this isn't as good, obviously. So we can move on to Cinebench and see that this system gets a thousand in Cinebench and that's about as maxed out as you can get with one of these systems. No matter which Xeon you pick, you might get maybe another, you know, 200 megahertz if you buy one of the higher end ones, but uh, about a thousand in Cinebench, maybe 1,050 is the max you're going to get. And then what I'm getting with the uh, 9600K at 5.1 gigahertz, I should say, is 1,221. So we're only... 20 or 200 points off in Cinebench between these two systems. Now, of course, the IPC is just 
you know, way better because you're only working with six threads on that machine on the on the Core i5, and you got half the threads, and it's doing better than twice the threads here. But if the program utilizes the you know the cores well enough, you're probably not going to notice too too much in the speed difference, and that really shows in gaming, which is where this thing really shines. So I've got some gaming slides here. Here is uh, the uh, Crossfire running on this system, okay, and it gets a graphic score of 24,000 and a total score of 18,172. And then if you remember from my Crossfire video with the Core i5 running, it does a lot better, but not that crazy better. Because look at the uh, the physics score is very, very close, 14,000 to 15,000, uh, but the graphics score is much better going from 25,000 to almost uh, 30,000. So yeah, Intel's come a long way in eight years, but again, you can get almost the whole motherboard CPU and RAM for the price of the processor. Like, it's kind of, it's like, I'm glad I revisited this, especially seeing as they're both six cores, really kind of makes sense. So what about some practical real world gaming? Well, I just ran a couple benchmarks because I have an RX 5, uh, 580, the exact same model in both. And I just ran some benchmarks. Um, we see here, this is Far Cry 5, and they're uh, so damn close. The um, average frames was 78 on this, and it was 80 on that. <laughs> like, the gaming performance on, uh, you know, because really the GPU is going to be the bottleneck with both of these systems is pretty damn close. Here's um, uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. The uh, average FPS is the same. It's awesome. And then we'll move on to uh, Tomb Raider. We see here that, you know, they're within 7 FPS on the average. So it's not bad at all. You can game almost as good on an 8-year-old platform that costs the same as just the CPU. Like, you know, we're, you know, we're talking without the graphics card and stuff like that. As a 9600K, like, Intel, where's your head at, man? Where is your head at? So that's, you know, just a little video today I wanted to say. You can use... Uh, the Xeon X5850, or 5650, I should say, on the nice saber tooth motherboard at 4 gigahertz. You have to overclock it, of course. You have to be savvy. You have to know what you're doing. But you can get this particular system to perform the same as, uh, you know, a $300 processor that Intel put out this year. It's, it's awesome. And it'll even video edit and, you know, do some production work. It'll definitely do, like... Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop and stuff like that. Like, you're not going to be running Blender workloads on this, but you're not going to run Blender workloads on the Core i5 with six threads anyways. So, they're very comparable in my opinion. It's almost like I used, I did the uh, Ryzen 1600, which I would, or, you know, or the 2600, I would rather have over the uh, uh, six core only Core i5. I did this comparison before, and it was pretty much the same. I just wanted to bring up that you can still use these systems and they still kick ass and you can put loads of memory in them it takes ecc memory if you want you can buy that cheap off ebay and have a nice little system for uh you know a gaming production work whatever you want so i'm not watching me join screen on twitter and uh yeah this is a awesome little system and i would say you wouldn't want to put any more than a 1070 in it you know that, that, that that's about it but uh or you know vega 56 but you could probably do it and get away with not suffering any more than like a couple of frames, especially if you're talking a versus a quad core i5 from like just two years ago, like uh, Sky Lake, Cavey Lake. It, this is just no contention. You'd much rather have the 12 threads over four. Like it's crazy. So yeah, I'm at watching me on Instagram and Twitter. X58 motherboards and Xeons are still some of my favorite things you can deal with out there because they're very affordable nowadays. You get really good memory for them, really good prices, and you can put a nice video card in them and blast some video games. I'll see you guys in another video. Thank you very, very much. Timmy Joe, Timmy, Timmy Joe. He makes videos about computers on the internet.